Welcome, welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Goldsmith Gaming with me, Christopher, and we're back with Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition and our playthrough on Insanity Difficulty, playing as a vanguard. Now, last time we uh, helped Liara out on Mars, as she was going for the Parodian Archives, and uh, we had some... Oh, yeah, I'm getting to you, Diane Allers. Bloody hell, chill out. Um... Yeah, we helped her out, we encountered some new uh, potential enemies, a very shiny lady who we actually uh, who we actually picked up ourselves, which is weird that we did that, but I guess that she might have had some information inside her skull that we wanted to get a hold of. And um, subsequently we went to Citadel because uh, Alenko was a little bit injured, he's now in Huerta Memorial, so hopefully gonna be patched up, but we need to talk to the council. So this episode most likely is going to be, chill out, uh, most likely gonna be the Citadel uh, episode, at least the first of some Citadel episodes, as well as possibly a bit of Normandy, we haven't really been able to be, go around the Normandy which is, by the way, parked right here. I do like the fact that they do this, that we are in a place where we can actually look at the Normandy from outside. Yeah, we haven't been on the Normandy, so to speak, and I would assume that now, as we've been here, I think we might be able to, so we have a couple of things that we can look through there. So I'm gonna go actually talk to the council first, because that is quite important in this game, so let's do that, but even before I do that, hello, Diana, Diana is her name, yes, Diana. Hey, wrong button. <laughs> hello, Diana Allers. Commander, just who I was looking for. Diana Allers, Alliance News Network. I think we can help each other. I don't have the greatest track record with reporters. I know, and it hasn't exactly endured you to a galactic audience, but that can change. I'm a military reporter with a show called Battle Space. We're carried on just about all council planets. My producers want me embedded on a human ship, and I want that ship to be the Normandy. Why would I want that? Wars can be won or lost in the editing room. And this war needs to be won. I've got Alliance security clearance and operate without a crew. You get veto power over the segments I file. Can you handle an arrangement like that? Or do I keep looking? Well, if you pick up a bra, I'm absolutely fine. Um, I think this is one of the reasons. Is this the renegade choice or is it just not? This is what, what I sort of dislike about this uh, dialogue system. Because generally speaking, you find normal renegade choices down here and general paragon choices up here but also in this case it might just be me saying no or yes Do, am i gonna get paragon for allowing her on the ship hopefully not i think that the game could be a little bit more clear about that but yeah i'm absolutely gonna get her on the ship tell your producers yes for now we'll see how it works out report to the ship as soon as possible any questions how much gear can i bring one footlocker. Aye, aye, Commander. Oh, well, there you go. It does appear as if I... Did I get Paragon for this? Did I get Paragon? No, I didn't. Good. So the, she is also labeled as a war asset. And she's also a love interest if you want to seduce her. Which I'm not going to do. So, press V. Uh, guess actually kind of cool maps in this game, which I enjoy. So, we need to get to the bloody Citadel uh, embassies, is where we're going. The Counselor, I would assume we are going for... we're not going here. So, passing lounge, viewing deck, security checkpoint, and uh, that is to the Normandy. So, it's really only one place we can go. So, let's uh, walk in here with all of our guns, because I presume I have guns with me. <laughs> and we can take a cab over here, I believe, or a lift. So, uh, yeah, Citadel Embassies first. Let's get that show on the road. Ah, now this is one of the places where I kind of like the game and how it does it, because uh, right now there's not a lot of people here. There's uh, probably what you would expect from a normal day on the uh, on the uh, Citadel, especially here at the embassies. But there's gonna be more as the game progresses, and I kind of like the, uh, the thing that they do there. There are gonna be, I don't know if there are people we can talk to 
right now there are gonna be people we can talk to later at the very least but right now no it does seem as if we are just here for one thing which is to talk to the council i guess we're gonna ooh, okay no 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 oh ah this is what we're doing we're just uh, standing around listening yes that is how this game works about to uh, forget that so now have the obelisk that is one thing that we can have a bit of a look at we don't have to talk to Avina right now. So basically, in this game, a lot of the times when people are talking, it's actually a good idea to just chill out a little bit and just have a bit of a listen. Uh, so for example, here, we can listen in to this older woman here. But we spoke about this already. I told you about his mission and... Nonsense. I just filled out the paperwork. He's very punctual when he's on the field. He checks in every week. But I... He hasn't checked in for a while now. A month. Anyway, I'd like to file an expedited contact request. Yes, of course, ma'am. But the notes on his file state he's not under a contact ban. Oh, you already looked. How kind. It's not like him to go quiet. As soon as I get news, ma'am, I'll let you know as soon as I get news. You're such a nice young woman. You know, you remind me of my daughter. And you know what? I listened to that completely in completely pointless for me to listen to that because <laughs> I didn't get anything from that. I sort of expe half expected that to be the case. Okay, whatever. Let's go to talk to Udin. Uh, that is Bailey. We're going to talk to Bailey. We need uh, Donald Udin. We get a first name. Well, isn't that Commander, lovely? Councillor Udin said you'd be coming. If you'll follow me, the council is already in session. Counselor, the Reapers are in our space as well. Earth is no more or less important than any Council homeworld. But Earth was the first Council world hit. By our reports, it faces the brunt of the attack. How do you know this is the brunt? New Reaper fronts are opening up everywhere. The reports are accurate. Earth was attacked. A full-scale invasion. And it's just the beginning. We need your help. Everything you can spare. Earth may be suffering, but our worlds are falling too. The Turians have lost Tetris. We must fight this enemy together. Need I remind you that the last time we fought the Reapers, Shepard sacrificed the Council to protect human interests. True, but in the end we survived because we followed Shepard's lead. And what if that's not enough this time? The reports are dire. If we throw everything we have at the Reapers on Earth and lose, what then? I don't expect you to follow me without a plan. Counselors, we have that plan. A blueprint created by the Protheans during their war with the Reapers. Prothean? What is it exactly? We're still piecing it together. But it appears to be a weapon of some sort. And this is capable of destroying the Reapers? So it would seem. It's immense, and intricate. This is a fool's errand. The Protheans were wiped out by the Reapers. Clearly, the weapon is flawed. It was incomplete. There was a missing component, here. Something referred to only as the Catalyst. But they ran out of time before they could finish building it. Do you believe in this, Shepard? After what you've seen of the Reapers? <laughs> I, I misread this, by the way. That's when I started laughing. Uh, I, I thought it said, I believe anything. No, 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 no. That, that, is, that, that is not what it, she is saying. No, no, no. Do you have a better plan by any chance? It sure as hell beats standing around and arguing about it. And while I haven't always agreed with Udina, he's right about this. We need to stand together, now more than ever. The Reapers won't stop at Earth. They'll destroy every organic being in the galaxy if we don't find a way to stop them. The Council cannot give Earth the military support it needs. Our own planets must come first. The Salarian Union is convening a summit amongst our species. If we can secure our own borders, we may be able to aid you. Our fleets are also engaged. Honesty is all I can offer, Commander. I will not make a promise of rescue that I cannot keep. 
Shepard, meet me in my office. I hope that's an offer of support. I'll be digging up what I can on this Prothean device, Shepard. They're a bunch of self-concerned jackasses, Shepard. We may have a spot on the Council, but humanity will always be considered second-rate. How can they be so blind? Commander, I can't give you what you're asking for, but I can tell you how to get it. I'm listening. Palavin's Primarch Bedorian is the one that called the War Summit. He's your kind of man, open to extreme solutions. Trouble is, he didn't get out of Palavin's system when the Reapers attacked. We don't know if he's alive. He's essential to the summit. If the Normandy could extract him without being detected... Aha, uh -huh. so now you want our help, do you? The Reapers are tearing us apart and you want to make a deal? I'm trying to help you, Commander. The summit leaders set our war strategy, and this council is beholden to their decision. Save the Primarch, gain an ally. One with the power to grant you what you're looking for. While the Reapers ravage Earth. Your counselor was right. We need to work together. This is the best way to get that. <laughs> Our intel says Primarch Fedorian is on Palavin's largest moon. Get in and out undetected, and he'll take care of the rest. Good luck, Commander. You're gonna need it. There is one other thing. The Council has agreed to reinstate your Spectre status. And there are certain resources that will be made available to you. Good luck. Well, that went well. It's a start. I'll talk to the others in the meantime. See if we can support this summit. Move things along. Thanks. And there we go. So we're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff. Some renegade points. Always nice. Let's wait for the cards here. Some boring codex updates, but let's get to the let's get to the juicy things. Reaper variants, where they get that from? <laughs> I don't know. Also, Reaper capabilities and ah, the the Citadel, so lovely. Uh, also, very quiet. No Reapers here for some reason. <laughs> There might be some lore reasons why they aren't here, but it, they are not here. Uh, Palavan is obviously yes, going to be our next target. Where you could not understand or rather believe who we are going to find. Who would we find? Actually, are we getting... Hey, I thought that we would be getting some, some resources, but apparently we didn't. Okay, fine. Let's get in here, because this is where we can go. As a Spectre. We couldn't go in here before. So we can have a bit of a look at the Spectre Terminal and the Requisitions Terminal. So Requisitions, we have something that we are gonna want. And I now realize that I need to... I need to have a bit of a look at this. I think it's this one. Quick draw shotgun, yes indeed. I think that that is the one that I want, but why don't I have more money? I thought that I would be getting money. Hmm. Welcome to the Spectre Information Processing Center. The terminal offers secure information access and support for authorization of covert operations or requisitions. It is restricted to operatives currently on active duty with special tactics and reconnaissance. An operation requiring payment can be executed at the terminal nearby, which supports secure and untraceable financial transactions. So, we get some information about the Quarian fleet. Quarian pilgrim Jan Vola Narnima on the Citadel received a large credit transfer from the fleet. Jan Volan purchased tech, including high-end weapon mounts and kinetic barrier emitters from several ship service centers. On Ilium, another Quarian pilgrim, unidentified, was observed searching for a ship traveling close to the Perseus Vale. The pilgrim was later heard saying that his pilgrimage was recalled. Data suggests that the Quarian fleet is withdrawing its pilgrims. And upgrading ships for combat somewhere near the Perseus Vale. This could be a reaction to the Reaper invasion, but no formal offer of re or request for assistance has come. It also suggests that the Aquarius may be instead preparing for conflict with Geth. So that's some information for us, but okay. Hmm. 
I was 100% sure that I would be getting some money. Because I don't have a lot of money and I do want stuff. Um, but... What is this? That is a rifle. That is just a gun. There's a whole lot more weapons than I remember. Because it could be this one. Oh bloody hell, I don't remember which one it is that I've been using. Alright, well we need more money at any rate. And I think that this is where we... Uh, no, we don't want to go to the shooting range, not right now at least. Alright, well that was a bit of a letdown. I had a bit higher hopes to be quite fair. Uh, we can do some other things, but actually now that I think about it, we might not be able to do so much. Uh, Bailey, don't you have something for us? There is no anti-humanity conspiracy here, Ms. Al Jelani. The Council's simply not granting interviews at this time. My viewers are going to know that CSEC and the Council are denying them access. Listen, lady, you think I like playing gatekeeper between the paparazzi and the politicians? I don't have time to babysit them, and I'm not here to hold your hand. Well, I'm camping out until I'm granted an audience. Fine. I hope you brought a sleeping bag. Commander Shepard? Commander, humanity has questions. Damn press. See, you're keeping the peace. Yeah, I feel like a glorified doorman. Most people would see it as a move up. Wedged in here with all the stuffed shirts? I'd rather be back down on the streets. I appreciate the higher pay grade, but I'm not a political creature. Well, why did you take the job then, or were you just forced into it? If you didn't want to be up, why would you accept? You don't say no to Councillor Udina. Well, maybe you would, but I gotta live here. I know, squeaky wheel gets the oil, but I didn't lobby for a promotion like some other officers. I'm not even sure why he picked me. I never know with politicians. I hate political BS. I concur. Politicians are the weeds of the galaxy. <laughs> if that was a bumper sticker, I'd stick it right here on my desk. <laughs> it's killing me about Earth. You and me both. I haven't been back in years. Now I may never. If this ain't the end of days, it's pretty damn close. All right, a little bit of a talk there. We also got to see Al J J Jalaini or whatever she's called. Very, very punchable face, if you know what I mean. Right, um, it does feel as if the... Uh, rather, it does feel as if I was a little bit too optimistic about the Citadel, because it feels like it's not really Commander open Shepherd. up to us. Commander, oh. people of the Alliance have questions. Well, well, Al Jilani, why don't we have a bit of a talk? Commander Shepard, Kalisa Bint seen in Al Jilani. Isn't it true that you were on Earth when the Reapers attacked? How do you justify running away while millions of people on Earth die? Is that the best? I've had enough of your tabloid journalism. Not this time, you militant. You're angry. I get that. But I came here to get help for Earth, not answer your questions. Stay down. I enjoy those interactions so, so much. And uh, she had learned a little bit. She did take a little bit of a dodge there, but I was too fast for her. Right, let's uh, get to her at the memorial as well, before we get back to the Normandy and see if uh, Alenko is having a good day or not. Now arriving at Huerta Memorial Hospital. Here we are. And yeah, ex the one the, the thing that I was saying about the Citadel is actually the entire thing isn't open up to us yet. So we can't really go about certain things. But we can talk to Dr. Shakwa as you are here. Shepard, there you are. Dr. Chakwas, you're here? I'm working at an Alliance R&D lab down in Shouter Wards, coordinating closely with Admiral Hackett. I heard you escaped Earth in the Normandy and that someone was critically injured. I came as fast as I could. We had a run-in with a Cerberus synthetic on Mars. Caden took the worst of it. How is he doing? Very well, all things considered. I'm impressed with Major Elenko's resilience, as well as Dr. Michelle's expertise. I wish I could have been there to help on Mars. Indeed, but what have you been up to apart from the thing that you just said? 
been six months, Doctor. How have you been? Good. I've been fortunate. When they impounded Normandy, the Alliance didn't really know what to do with me. I was never officially part of Cerberus, and I'd gotten a proper leave of absence from my previous post. So you hadn't technically done anything wrong by joining me to defeat the Collectors? Yes, though I suppose if you were judged to be a war criminal, I would have been tried as an accessory. Well, I could say that she does belong in the Normandy, but I'm gonna go for the bottom. No, actually, no. You should be on the Normandy. Your place is in Normandy's med bay, not some lab. I couldn't agree more. You say the word and I'm with you. Absolutely. Welcome aboard. The Normandy wouldn't be the same without you, Doctor. Get your things. Docking bay D24. Yes, Commander. And thank you. Don't thank me so soon. Remember, Joker's still aboard. And I'd be surprised if he's been remembering his medication. Well, there you go. We have Chakwas. That's kind of cool. Um, of course, we got some bloody Paragon for that. See, sometimes it's weird. I mean, we didn't get any Paragon points for the reporter, but we did get Paragon points for Chakwas. I don't like that. Isn't this a... No. Mission? Maybe I could be transferred to another hospital then. Some place unsecure. I sort I of feel like this right? is a... No, this is no probably humans. not a mission either. I think you get the missions kind of early on. Uh, when you listen in on people. Uh, right, Michelle. Commander Shepard, good to see you. Dr. Michelle, it's been a long time. I've come a long way from that small clinic down in the wards. Because of you, I don't know where I'd be if you hadn't dealt with Fist and his thugs. Now I'm med physician in the Presidium Clinic. You gave me this chance. I assume you're here about Major Alenko. No. <laughs> uh, so this is the woman actually in Mass Effect 1. Man, I did not remember her. Yeah, is he okay? How is Caden doing? The head trauma was severe, but we reduced the swelling quickly. These types of injury can go either way. He hasn't regained consciousness yet, but his vitals are strong, so I'm optimistic. You can go see him if you like. He's just under oil. Uh-huh. How's the situation with refugees, by the way? Shouldn't there be, like, a lot of them already? This war may leave a lot of injured people homeless. Can the Citadel clinics care for them all? We're fine now, but I'm worried. Every hospital in the Citadel is preparing for the worst. I hear the docks are tightly controlled, but we just can't leave people floating out there forever. Indeed. And uh, how about supplies? How are your medical supplies holding up? We're well stocked now, but I can't say I'm not worried about the future. I'm afraid I'll have to speak with CSEC about securing our supplies. Desperate people can do desperate things. That is true. And uh, staffing is not fine then. With a center of this size, you must have a lot of direct reports. We've got 12 full-time doctors and over 50 support staff. It can be overwhelming, quite different from my days in the wards. I mean, 12 doctors seem like nothing. Isn't that like super, super tiny? But sure, whatever. Keep up the good work, Doctor. You too, Commander. There we go. Let's see if we cannot actually... Oh, that's... oh no, actually, wait. When it says... Ah, when it says reputation... Ah, it says they're like both of them. Yeah, I think that that is actually what's going on. When it says reputation is both. Right, that's how this game does some things. Um, right. There are a couple of things that we will be able to do because I don't know if we're actually. I'll see if we have the required spatial bindings. Oh. Meet you back here. That I sort of recognize, but apparently not. Caden, how are you? Hey, Caden. Don't know if you can hear me. Since you can't tell me to get the hell out either, I'm gonna take my chances. Oh, it feels like I'm gonna be super, super emotional here about a guy that I literally care nothing about at all. Get on your feet, bloody hell. Get your ass out of this bed and back to your post, Major. Seeing you in action again reminded me you're a hell of a soldier. The Alliance could sure use you. I could use you. You need anything, Doc, let me know. Come on, Caden. Fight.
And that's an order. Well, maybe they could give him a, uh, a, 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 a hospital gown. I don't know exactly why he's lying <laughs> bare chested, but uh, maybe something to do with whatever it is that he suffered. Um, yeah, it, it's a little bit weird that I'm so super emotional about a guy that I've been literally doing nothing with. I didn't even consider talking to him in the first game, and now I'm all, almost teary eyed about him. It's a bit weird. Uh, but yeah, I think that we are going to unlock some things as we progress. I feel like I'm uh, I'm basically going, uh, taking events a little bit too quickly here, is what I'm thinking. Because uh, it feels like we are still sort of in a introductory phase of the game. Uh, I should probably just not... Uh, <laughs> Not be too quick about things, I suppose. So, as that is the case, we don't really have much more to do right now than just to get back to the docking bay and go on the Normandy, I suppose. Let's uh, let's just do that. Now arriving at docking bay D24. Cool, cool, cool. And yeah, there's really nothing here either, I don't think. Yeah, because we haven't even unlocked the uh, place where all the people is, <laughs> if, if you know what I mean. I mean, we have the place with the shops, that's not open. We also have the... Uh, is, is that a dock as well? There's a whole bunch of people with, like, soldiers and stuff like that. Uh, I don't even think that my companions are here right now, so yeah. Uh, things are gonna open up later in the game. Let's go back to the Normandy and see if we can actually be on the Normandy. Oh no, it's this bloody thing. This is also one of the weird things about this game, I suppose. Yeah, fine, there was a kid and the kid died. We all know that it's very, very sad, but doesn't it sort of feel like Shepard wouldn't really be disaffected? I mean, I guess it's some sort of a way to make Shepard be a little bit more personal, I suppose. Well, let's just follow this kid around in super, super slow motion. Almost running somewhere here. There he is, surrounded by a lot of scrap, scrap paper, I suppose. So yeah, we're gonna have a few of these along the game, and it's, uh, eh, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's what it is. Yara, can I help you? I've been forwarding the Turian Counselor information on the Prothean device. It can't be built without Council support, but he's not budging until their Primarch is safe. I know. Are you alright? Well, I've never been better. No, 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 I have been better, as a matter of fact. I didn't get what you'd call a good night's rest. There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? And since Liara is our love interest in this game, we can't really go uh, bottom choices or uh, that much, I believe. When the Reapers hit, I could hear people screaming in the streets below me. We left a lot of them behind. There's no way for you to save them all. But I know you're doing everything you can, and you'll get back there in time to help. I hope you're right. Don't blame yourself, Commander. Commander Shepard, I'm Specialist... Oh, uh, I, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone. I was just leaving. 
Commander Shepard, I'm Com Specialist Samantha Trainer with Alliance R&D. I was part of the team retrofitting the Normandy after you turned it over to the Alliance. There weren't many of us aboard when the Reapers hit. And here we go, Trainer. Another love interest. She, she is sort of like uh, uh, Human Chambers from Mass Effect 2. She is uh, not a proper companion, but you can uh, romance her if you would like. But I'm going to be very, very short and cool with her. I need the Normandy functional. What exactly have you done to my ship? We upgraded communications and removed most of the Cerberus tech, Commander. Meaning? The ship's in line with Alliance regs now, and it has new, top-of-the-line, quantum entanglement communicators. In fact, Admiral Anderson had intended to use the Normandy as his mobile command center. That's no longer an option. Yes, I heard he chose to stay and fight. I in any event, I'm honored to serve under you, Commander. For as long as you need me, that is. They only sent me here to oversee the retrofits. Shepard. Some of our systems require further testing, and Specialist Trainer has been extremely effective during installation. I would prefer that she remain. Got it, Edie. Oh, wait, since when does a virtual intelligence make requests? Edie's an AI. Fully self-aware. Oh, I knew it. I knew Joker was lying. Jeff requested that I pretend to be a simple VI to protect myself. I apologize for the deception. Thanks, E.D., and I apologize for all those times I talked about how attractive your voice was. Anyway, shall I give you a tour? I think you'll be impressed by the new upgrades. In the CIC, you'll find the galaxy map where you can set the Normandy's destination. You can also check your messages at your private terminal. The War Room houses a strategic command center for mission-specific intel and war analysis. The shuttle bay contains an armory where you can modify your equipment between missions. Finally, Liara has set up a lot of hardware down in the old XO office on deck three. I think she's claimed that room. And there you are. Still the same ship as before, it just flies Alliance colors now. Speaking of which, I believe Admiral Hackett would like to speak to you at the VidCom. Commander. Udina updated me on your meeting with the council. Sounds like they're running scared. And as usual, the council is useless. And also, Trainer is very hot for Edie, which is gonna get even more complicated later on. The council's been a pain in my ass from day one. I'm done with them. Then what's your plan? I'm trying to get the Turian Primarch for a summit meeting with the Asari and Salarians. Yeah. I'll bypass the council and appeal directly to their leadership. That's good, I like it. This is where we start laying the groundwork for our counterattack. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to back it up right now. Then build alliances. Gather everything and everybody you can for the cause. What about the Prothean device? Find me people who can help build it. And if you can't, I'll take ships, soldiers, supplies, whatever you can get. We need to keep hitting the Reapers across every theater of war they open. Buy us time to figure out the device. And when it's finished? Assuming it ever is, we pool all our resources. Think of it as a giant armada for delivering the device, when the Reapers are most vulnerable. The stronger you can make that armada, the better the chances of punching through. And we shall get it done, absolutely. You can count on it, sir. It's not just me, it's everyone back on Earth. Anderson and what's left of the Alliance forces have to hold out until we deal with the enemy. I understand, Admiral. Good. Then make it happen, Commander. I'll be expecting regular updates on your progress. Hack it out. And there we go. Control of me on the Normandy. Beautiful. And um, yeah, this is where I can sort of pick up what I said in the first, uh, first video, which is that uh, the way that the game sets up everything with regards to the Reapers makes it sort of feel like Earth is just doomed. There's no way that they can survive that attack. So it's a bit weird if we are chilling out while Earth is getting demolished. And uh, however, 
uh, Anderson is going to be able to be alive. It's it's absolutely ridiculous in my opinion, but it's what the game has done. So in the war uh, terminal, we can now look at our war assets. The people, war weapons, armies, and fleets that you've accumulated are your war assets. Overall readiness of the galaxy determines how effectively these assets will perform in the final battle. So we actually do need to be able to go over the minimum. We've gotten a bunch of people. A bunch of things are just available to us. The analysis is counting for 5. Awesome. And the Normandy is counting for 115. We have some marine divisions. We have the Admiral Mikhailovich, the First Fleet, etc. etc. I'm going to get more over here. And uh, our choices back in Mass Effect 1 and 2 will uh, sort of determine what we can and cannot do. Or rather, not, not what we can and cannot do, but who we can and cannot get. So this is the new room in the, on this ship, the War Asset Room. Uh, not the most important one, but you know, we can, as we just did, look at our various War Assets. We also have the Conference Room, very nice. So, we are going to have a bit of a look. Uh-huh. We're just talking to each other, cool. Uh, I would like to have a bit of a look. Admiral Hackett would like you to investigate. Is that DLC things? I have no idea. Don't know how many so like smaller DLC bits are in this game. I know uh, some of the larger ones, uh, but not all of them. I don't think. Uh, but I want to get down and check. Um, I want to get down and check weapons and stuff and see what we can do up until this point. And that is down in here. We have oh, we have our very very own old Fenris mech. Oh, isn't that cute? That is probably gonna turn on us at some point. Uh, lovely. We obviously have Mister uh, Mister James here, just having a bit of workout. Hey, Shepard. <clears throat> How'd it go with the council? <clears throat> Same as usual. Non-committal. Unhelpful. Bet they still wanted you to help them out, no? Yep. We're going to rescue a Turian Primarch from Palavan. <sighs> Sounds like fun. Never been to the Turian homeworld. <sighs> you come down here for something? Or are you just looking? Hey! I don't need a reason to come down here. To my ship. And look. I go where I want and talk to whoever I want. <sighs> Fair enough. <sighs> Not sure what there is to talk about. You already know my service record. I don't, actually. I didn't have access to personnel records when we met. Right. Forgot about that. Well... Think you can dance and talk at the same time? Hey, watch your tune. Are you gonna challenge me a little bit here? Yes, I can, Lieutenant. You pulling rank on me, boss? We're just soldiers down here, no? Sure. But this soldier will clean the floor with you if you step out of line. Ha! You sound like my old CO. <laughs> oh, yeah? And who was that? Captain Tony. He was a hard-ass son of a bitch, but a good leader. <laughs> nice. What do you mean, was? Died. With most of my squad. Protecting a civilian colony from a collector attack. And the colony? It was either them, or the intel we had on the collectors. Intel we could have used to destroy them. I chose the intel. Tough choice. But it was the right call. You think so? I would have done the same. That's what's funny. You were doing the same thing. You took out the collectors. We never needed that intel. You didn't know. You can't blame yourself, Vega. Who says I'm blaming myself? I do. You a shrink too? No, but that stunt back on Mars was reckless. 
been lucky to be alive. So? So. Maybe you don't care if you live or die. Or maybe. I'm just willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to end this goddamn war. Good to hear it. But you sacrifice yourself or my ship needlessly. That's unacceptable. Thanks for the pep talk. Anytime. Hey. Thanks for the dance, Lola. Ah, not Lola. No nicknames, Lieutenant. Okay? Your ship, your rules. Your loss. And there we go. If we ever would have wanted to uh, romance him, I think we're striking out. And I should have read that. Something is available in the medbay. We'll have a bit of a look at that. Cortez, hello. Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. Got news about our supply chains, Commander. Well, there we go. There's a name for whoever always run, dri drives our shuttles, because I don't think we do it that ourselves. This is the guy, apparently. Good work, Lieutenant. What have you got? Dios. Straight to business without even a hello? You two need to chill out. So you do care, Mr. Vega? Or is that the Cerveza talking again? So what's happening with our supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. So... You're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dot ship. I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M-44 Hammerhead. In my experience, it made sense for me to take over as shuttle pilot when we left Earth. Especially given Mr. Vega's love of mid-air collisions. To save the day, pendejo! I'm also responsible for logistics, making sure the armory and shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. Cool. So this is actually sort of a throwback to Mass Effect 1 when we had uh, requisitions on the ship. Kind of cool. So, what's your service record? How long have you been with the Alliance? About 10 years. I enlisted in First Fleet serving on the SSV Hawking, flying F-61 Tridents mostly. I love the Trident. It practically dances in low atmo. I spent as much time tinkering on my bird as flying her. Got a bit of a reputation. So you can fly fighters and fix them? Yeah, and I got a knack for procurement too. They were grooming me for CAG, but my skill set made me more valuable commanding a flight deck. They assigned me to the Normandy retrofit team about five months ago to oversee all cargo bay modifications. I have no idea what CAG is, but it sounds fun. So, uh, any ground vehicles here? What happened to the M44 Hammerhead? was sent to the tech labs for a retrofit. To afford mobility with such a small ESO core, its design sacrificed armor plating. The lab engineers are trying to improve that. After the Reaper invasion, those labs are probably just a pile of rubble. Well, that's just too bad. I did like the M44 Hammerhead. The Kodiak seems a bit different. Good eyes, Commander. This is the UT-47A Kodiak. It's got an upgraded ESO core and prototype stealth technology based on the Normandy design. For quick drops, I can get you in and out virtually undetected. She flies like a brick, so that's why you need a good pilot. Well, there we go. So we have two good pilots on this ship. That is very, very nice indeed. So apparently I want to know about his family. I have no idea why I want to know about his family, but let's ask him about his family. You were stationed on Earth. You have family there? I'm an only child. Lost my parents years ago. I had a husband back when I was stationed at Ferris Fields. The collectors took out the whole colony. I'd rather not talk about it. Well, there we go. I think that that is... Is that the first openly gay character in this game? I mean, apart from Shepard, obviously. Uh, which you can decide yourself on. But yeah, that's interesting. Cool. So, uh, can, what can you tell me about the armory, then? Do you maintain this armory? I share that duty with our illustrious Mr. Vega. Though I believe the only weapon he really cares to maintain is himself. You know you love the show, Esteban. <laughs> The first retrofit we did was to move the armory down from deck two. I'm not sure what Cerberus engineers were thinking. Now you get off the elevator, pick your gear, and head right into the shuttle. Just like the original Normandy. Welcome back to the Alliance, Commander. Yeah, there we go, exactly. A little bit of a throwback to how yes, it was before. 
So indeed, over here, we can now have a bit of a look at the procurement interface. We don't really have a lot of stuff right now, but I can get the uh, Spectre requisitions. so I can get all of those things. But as I said, it's cheaper to do it on site, so let's not wor worry too much about that. Now we can start upgrading our weapons, but I don't necessarily feel like I want to spend money on that, so for now, let's not. The weapon bench. Now this is actually, you know what, let's go out of that. I want to see what did I choose uh, for the fitness? Uh, was it fitness or was it... Uh, no, it was in biotic charge. Um, I chose... Was it not here? Where was the... What is it? Assault Mastery? Weight carry capacity, yes. Right, I never took this. Um, I will most likely actually, I mean here, we were talking about squad made power damage, squad made weapon damage, but getting weight capacity bonus up, that might be extremely important, because right now, uh, where I am with one shotgun and one heavy pistol, I am at power research speed of 110%. I'm a little bit interested, can I... Do this 160 now I might be screwing myself over a bit here possibly uh, but I'm gonna try this for the uh, for the Turian p place Palavan and see what that actually does but if I can carry more I think that this is affected because uh, I think that that'll uh, I'll slice right behind the text there if I, I think that that is what sort of goes all the way up here uh, which means that I can carry more weapons and still have a really good uh, recharge speed. But I'm going to try this. So, we have picked up a couple of things, if I'm not incorrect. We have the high, high caliber barrel, increased damage, or a shredder mod. We have reduced damage per piercing thick objects. Don't like that, so let's go for that one. And over here, well, we can have both of them right now. Uh, I don't really want that one, so let's uh, let's ignore that for now. So we get a little bit more damage. I enjoy that. So that's fine. We can't do anything with our companions stuff, it seems like. It also doesn't seem like our companions stuff is down here. Where is that? Let's have a little bit more of a poke around. And also, I would like to go to the uh, med bay and see what is going on over there as well. So let's uh, start there. And of course, in here, we also have uh, the, the little sign here about it, for, or rather for all the people who actually have died. Because even though we did the uh, suicide mission in Mass Effect 2 without having anyone die, I mean, people are still died. We have Presley there, we have uh, Ashley Williams, etc, etc. There are a couple of people who have died and we can't really do anything about it. So that's uh, something. Uh, right, let's see in the medical lab. What did we have in here? Let's have a bit of a chat. Is it here? Reassign power bonuses. I was t thinking about that, but I think it, I uh, actually am fine with my choices. That's a good one. Weapon damage after a successful weapon, a biotic charge. Damage of force. That's exactly what I want. Uh, that is the resource speed of biotic charge. We have melee damage after kill, melee bonus, etc. So all of that is exactly what I want, but I could. Right, no. Uh, is, this, is this for free? 5,000 right now. Well, I'm going to be picking up more money, I guess, as I go along. You know what, I'm going to... Mm, um, I'll think about that before the next episode. So that is reassigned power bonuses, reassigned... What is the difference? Uh, oh, bonus powers. Never mind, not the one that I wanted. This is the one that I want. Here we go. Fine. I can do it for free. Awesome. Um, let's do that. And let's purchase that. I guess, yeah, that, that's just the first one. So, 
we do want biotic charge so let's see if i can remember what i took but i think i do so basically damage of force instead of uh, more targets i mean it would be nice two additional targets within two meters of the impact point but uh for the most part i'm going to be zooming all over the place and going to different targets so no that's actually not super good i guess more damage of force is good and uh, weapon synergy or Power damage 4.25% for 15 seconds after a successful biotic charge. Not terribly bad, uh, but more weapon damage is, is going to sync up really nice with a shotgun. So I think that that is actually the better choice. These are both very good, by the way. And over here, it's obviously the not triggering a cooldown chance. Not even a choice. In fitness, we are going to go... Come on get it thank you uh over here it is obviously the melee damage bonus we need to be able to do more melee damage we do want the 75 percent increased damage after a kill and we want the recharge speed of biotic charge to be super super fast so that's also a given um assault mastery we are now gonna get so we're gonna have a bit of a look at that uh so we are gonna take uh Right, okay. Assault Mastery, let's see, what, 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 what is this one? Power damage, weapon damage, or force bonus or reputation bonus? Uh, no. Reputation bonus, fair enough. Do we get that on all? No, it's actually only this one. Force bonus. No, power damage or weapon damage has to be that one. But I am going to go for the weight capacity, 35 points. That is interesting. I think that it will help me. Shotgun damage, 15%. Yes. Uh, not even a question about that, because that is my weapon of choice. Now, as for the rest, uh, Nova is the one that we are going to go for, because I do want to start using this as well. So let's start working on this one. Damage and force, radius. No, no, no. Damage and force. So there we go. That's a, that's a lot better distribution of my points. So we can go into other stuff as we continue. I'm going to hold off on uh, Liara and James because I sort of already have chosen for them. So I don't think I need to do anything with that. Uh, Shockwest, do you have anything else to say? Commander. Everything okay down here, Doctor? The Alliance team cleaned up and restocked, but it's still my old med bay. Feels like home. Welcome back. Thank you. Let's waste no time. If I may, I'd like to examine you. Why is that? Nothing wrong with me, is there? No, but we should keep an eye on all those cybernetic implants Cerberus grafted into you. Expensive stuff bringing me back. And worth every penny. Let's just make sure everything is okay. Well, is it really necessary, though? I ever told you I don't like doctors? Don't be such a grouch. I'm just going to run some diagnostics on your implants, and it'll take a few readings. Your system is still detecting the implants as foreign bodies. There's no health risk, but your scars are having trouble healing. I recommend reducing stress levels. Be compassionate. I'm giving everything I've got, Doc. I'm just saying, a little more optimism and a little less realism could help, Commander. Anyway, it's just a cosmetic issue. Nothing to worry about. That's it. The other picture of health. I do wonder if she says that because I'm a bit renegade -y. Does she have a different line if you're Paragon? That's interesting. Um, yeah, so... Uh... I don't know what she said about the scars, because my scars are gone. My lovely, lovely face scars. I miss them so much. Right, what is the situation of our medical supplies? How's your inventory of meds? The med bay was fully stocked before you left Earth. We should be good for a long time, even given the amount of fire you take each day. Well, good to know. Do you ever regret working for Cerberus? We didn't work for them. We used them. If I were to feel anything, it would be guilt. We took their money, took their best people, took their best ship. We used them to defeat the Collectors, and now we are using their resources against them. So no, I don't regret it one bit. That is a very good way to look at it. You've never mentioned any of your family. None to speak of, really. I'm the last of a prestigious line of medical professionals. The Alliance is my spouse, and you are all my children. I'm blessed with many close friends, but with each Alliance vessel taken, I lose one or two. We need to end this war. And we will. I'll see you around, Doctor. 
Take care, Shepard. I don't know exactly why Shepard is so interested in family, <laughs> but, but but she is, uh, which is fine. Uh, is my mess guy still here? I don't know. Let's have a bit of a check in here because we have Liara and her lovely, lovely setup. Commander Shepard, it's a pleasure to see you again. You're the drone from the Shadow Brokers ship. Dr. Tassoni now refers to me as Glyph instead of Info Drone 95% of the time. If you have a moment, I'd like to draw your attention to a terminal in her office. It analyzes information packages. If you find any useful data, I can research upgrades for you. And what should I be looking for? I'll inform you if you found relevant data. When you do, return to this terminal for your choices. In the meantime, Dr. Tassoni would like to speak with you. Have a pleasant day. Oh, I like Glyph. He's cool. Uh, have I gotten? Yes, I have. Armor mod kits. Uh, the meeting was less than ideal. Oh. At least oh, he's, she's not talking to me. Cool. So armor mod kit. Fair enough. Sure Suppose his contact. Bloody hell! Let's talk to Liara first. Hello, Liara. <laughs> God damn it. Looks like you brought more than just that drone from your ship. A few things were necessary. I'd be a very silent shadow broker without data feeds. So you have access to your resources? What I can get, we'll need it to research this Prothean device. Until we understand precisely what it does, it's far too dangerous to use. Uh huh. So, uh, well, I know that they didn't, Shepard, but but that's a stupid question. But let's ask it anyway. Did the Protheans actually complete this weapon? You mean, will it work? They wouldn't have poured their last resources into this device if they thought otherwise. But we really need to find out just what kind of weapon they left us. Uh huh. It'd be nice to know we're not kids playing around with a loaded gun. Absolutely. The damage it could cause if it backfired is unthinkable. This will be difficult even for us. If something happens on a mission, if either one of us are hurt, I'll always remember that tour of the Normandy. But let's be honest, Shepard. It's been more than a half a year. Should we continue where we left off? Oh, absolutely. I'd like that more than anything, Liara. Good. I was getting worried. There are a lot of reasons I was happy to see you on Mars. I'd like that list, but later. There's so much left to do. I'm working with Edie. Hopefully we can discover what the Protheans left for us. But I'm looking forward to talking about something other than business. Maybe later? Uh-huh. Sure thing. Now let's get into this. <laughs> armor mod kit. Farron has persuaded his contacts to ship an armor mod kit to the Normandy. Technically illegal in civil space, the kit's omni-gel converter and manufacturer and fabricator can make a one-time modification to Shepard's armor, improving shield strength and or, or adding thermal clip compartments. Um, is that free? does look like it so do i want shields or ammo capacity i think generally as i do enjoy being a glass cannon ammo capacity is gonna be my choice let's use that one thank you and uh yeah that is now the upgrade that i have cool so a little bit of uh, a little bit of that i do need to re remember that that is a thing as well yes uh, right now, I don't think that there is too much, but we can talk to the woman, the reporter. Now, where is she? Well, I haven't been able to find her just yet, but down in engineering, we have Engineer Adams. Hello. Commander, welcome back to the Normandy. Or maybe you should be saying that to me. Engineer Adams, what are you doing here? I was put in charge of the drive core retrofits. My experience on the Normandy SR-1 made me an obvious choice. So, what do you think of our SR-2? She's incredible. If there's one nice thing I can say about Cerberus, it's that they know how to build a ship. And about that, Cerberus, I mean. I owe you an apology. How so? Back when you got this ship, Dr. Chalk was contacting me, asking me to help with your mission against the Collectors. I refused. I didn't have your back, and I'm sorry for that. Well, why did you refuse? Why didn't you join us? 
I saw what happened to you when the Normandy went down. I didn't trust that it was really you, and I certainly didn't trust Cerberus. Also, as an officer of the Alliance, I don't just leave my post, you know? Well, I mean, fair play, but you kind of owe me for that. You can make up for it on this tour of duty. Yes, ma'am. And let's talk about your family, because again, Shepard seems to be all about family in this game. Is your family okay? My parents are serving on Viridian Zenith, an Alliance agricultural vessel. My sister is a navigator on the SSV Benjamin Davis. Happy to report that both vessels are safely under Hackett's command. Cool. So what's your take on the Normandy? Does the new Normandy stack up to the old SR-1? <laughs> stack up. It blows the old ship away. The Tantalus drive core has been completely overhauled. The SR-2 might be nearly twice the size, but the new drive core is three times bigger. This ship can fly. That said, Cerberus isn't too high on safety. If pushed past her limits, this core would vent into engineering. Guess it gives my team incentive to keep her well balanced during a firefight. Do your job or get vaporized. Pretty much. I noticed you upgraded the kinetic barriers with cyclonic technology. Should help reduce the draw when under missile fire. Hopefully that means fewer vaporized engineers. The IES stealth system is significantly improved. It can handle a higher blue shift of our emissions. And that means? We should be able to drop out of FTL without triggering every sensor in range. Very handy for stealth reconnaissance. All in all, the Normandy is a marvel of engineering. Awesome. And I'm in control of it all. Beautiful. What do you think of Edie? We had a good talk during the retrofit. A little strange at first, talking shop with an AI. AI? I thought Edie posed as a VI to keep the likes of you from unplugging her. Yeah, but I saw through her. Have you seen her hardware? Processing power is off the charts. And then there were the problems that kept fixing themselves. If I hadn't had her pegged, I would have sworn I was losing it. You never expressed any skepticism, Lieutenant Adams. I figured I'd better play it safe with the Cerberus AI, Edie. No offense. None taken. As long as you keep your fingers out of my cognizance processors. <laughs> In the beginning, I tried disconnecting her from key processes without giving myself away. Easier said than done. But Joker seemed to trust her, and in time I saw her advantages. Even grew to like her. Well, isn't that just beautiful? Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, ma'am. Well, I probably won't find the reporter, I have no idea where she is. So, let's wrap this up by actually talking to Joker, because, uh, yeah, why, sh why wouldn't we? Let's go and have a bit of a chat with him. Hello, Joker, you're sitting here chilling, seeing absolutely nothing because the uh, windows on are on the side. Hey, Commander, you know, I had my doubts about the Council, but after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't help. Well... Are you surprised about that? Because I'm not. They've spent years denying the threat. You think they'd be prepared now? I was kind of hoping that maybe they were planning in secret and just not telling you about it because, you know, Cerberus. Well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them. You know, for old time's sake. I would like that very, very much. I think that we are maybe going to have some opportunities to do that. Possibly. We shall see. But yeah, so, as I said, Citadel and Normandy episode, this one. We are going to get back into the fighting by a lot in the next episode. We are going to be fighting, I think it's a lot of husks, isn't it, on Palavan and some other things as well. And I think... Are we going to get introduced to the big guy... I think we're gonna get uh, can't even talk. Gonna get introduced to the big guy is what I wanted to say. Yes, I think we do. We have some uh, some some uh, messages to read as well. We'll do that right now. I think we've gone on for far too long. So next episode we are going to Palavan and we're gonna find the Turians there. And uh, yeah, there's a Turian there that I'm you know very 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 interested in bringing back on the team i believe so we shall see about that in the next episode for now though this has been ghostsmith gaming with me christopher thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time